Hey everyone, today we are going to take a closer look at a real price to performance killer if you're looking for a cheap and reliable office PC slash desktop replacement. It's the new B-Link EQI13 mini PC, which in today's tested configuration comes with an Intel Core i7 13620H. Now, that's an older CPU that actually keeps crossing my path lately and I wonder if Intel still has millions of these laying around in some shelf somewhere, but for a cheap mini PC with a focus on office use like this, it's a really good choice with its six performance cores, which includes hyper-threading, plus four additional efficiency cores. If you're not tweaking anything in here, it runs quite efficiently with only 35 watt. The CPU also comes with an Intel Iris Xe integrated GPU that in this case sports 64 EUs. That's not a lot by any means, but it's enough for some casual and indie gaming, as we'll see in a bit. It is paired with 32GB of DDR4 3200 mega transfer RAM in dual channel mode. So it has two 16GB sticks installed and a 1TB M.2 SSD, while both RAM and SSD can be upgraded and there is a full-size second M.2 slot available. It also sports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 and a clean Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed. But there is neither a microphone nor speakers installed in here. Beeling provided this review sample but they didn't pay for the review, they had no influence on it, I wasn't obliged to make a video at all and they didn't see it before you guys. Now today's tested version here costs only around 385 euro or 419 dollar, while it's also available for 399 dollars if you're getting it with an Intel Core i5-13500 instead, which funnily enough does have the better integrated GPU with 80 EUs and since that one actually has two additional e-cores, it is actually virtually just as powerful with only slight differences in single core and multi-core speed. The port selection is pretty standard but absolutely sufficient for most use cases. At the front we're getting two USB 3 ports with a speed of 10 gigabit per second, one being a USB-C, no display port support, and the other a Type-A port, as well as a 3.5mm audio jack. At the back there are two 1 gigabit LAN ports, two HDMI 2.0 ports, two USB 3 Type-A ports and one USB 2 Type-A port. Be aware there is no Thunderbolt and no USB-C 4 support, so you won't be able to attach uh, any kind of eGPU here or transfer data faster than 10 gigabits per second. But then again, this mini PC was not intended for gaming in the first place. The power supply is actually included in the EQI13's chassis and you just need to plug in a cable at the back. I really like that because it allows for a much cleaner setup and transportation is easier as well. By the way, the case is now, in contrast to the previous B-Link EQI12 version, made out of a silverish aluminum, no plastic. It has a very good build quality, it feels very premium, it's around 13 by 13 by 5 centimeters in size and weighs 648 gram with the built-in power supply. Opening the mini PC for an upgrade is straightforward. Loosen the screws at the bottom beneath the rubber feet and you're in. Two RAM slots and two M.2 SSD slots are waiting for you inside, but you'll have to get rid of this mighty heatsink for the SSDs to upgrade them or install a second one. And you'll need a 3.5mm hex socket bit to release this little screw slash standoff over here to do so. But it is doable and you can also change the Wi-Fi module afterwards. Now one thing that I've noticed is that the EQI13 is really quiet. The fan in here never became annoying and it's even really bearable under full load compared to many other mini PCs I've tested. And it's basically inaudible during lighter tasks or watching YouTube etc. For the SSD, Beeling used the popular Crucial P3 Plus 1TB PCIe Gen 4 SSD with decent read and write speeds of around 4 gigabytes per second. As mentioned before, the i7 in here uses 35 watt in the long run for the PL1, which is a bit less than the i7 13620H could handle, but that way it stays cool and quiet with around 35 decibel only and 77 degrees Celsius for the CPU after a longer Cinebench loop. In Cinebench R23 I got up to 11,733 points for the multi-core and 1,886 points for the single-core test. That's not breathtaking by any means, but it's more than sufficient for what this is considering the cost, the efficiency, and that in theory you should be able to use this as an office PC for 10 years easily performance-wise. In the PCMark 10 benchmark it scored up to 5542 points and I also ran the Podshit Systems benchmark test for Photoshop which resulted in a solid 6282 points while for the Premiere Pro that was only 1936 points. But some basic video editing with this is possible 
just don't expect super fluid timeline scrubbing with 4K material depending on what you do with it. While it seemed capable of handling the file of one of my latest reviews, which was filmed in 4K and uses color grading and B-roll material in an okay way. The latency mon test also suggested that audio production should work okay with this. Now the integrated Iris XE with its 64 EUs in the i7-13620H isn't among the best iGPUs on the market, especially when paired with slower 3200MHz DDR4 RAM. But if you're really modest, you can enjoy some gaming on the EQI13 in lighter games. And by the way, in 3D Mark Firestrike, it scored a total of 3,955 points. So let's have a look at how it performs in a handful of games. I was testing CS2 at 1080p with the low preset including FSR, which resulted in an average of 66 FPS and 1% loss of 46 in a deathmatch against bots on Dust2. Now, you're not going to win any tournaments or clan wars with this, but it might be enough for some casual after work fun for non professionals. Well, at least it was over 60 FPS more or less most of the time, and it felt fluid enough in general. As you can see, the whole APU only seems to draw around 20 watt in gaming here. I don't know if that's a reading error or if it's just the iGPU not using too much wattage while the CPU is being a bit bored, therefore. Rocket League worked fine at 1080p with medium settings and I saw an average of around 84 FPS with lower 1% lows of 42 FPS due to some weird little frame time spikes, but I didn't notice them at all and it was just perfectly playable overall. No complaints here really, that's doable. I also tried the new demo of Anno 117 at 720p with low settings and FSR on quality. That way it is quite blurry as you can see, but it is doable at least in the beginning with around 29 to 30 FPS, while after 30 minutes and more buildings, it was already down to 20 to 25 FPS. I mean, it's still kind of manageable for a game like that, but it's surely not optimal. Hard to say how it would do in late game here, probably not the best experience to put it mildly. Diablo 4 was playable at 1080p with the low preset and XCSS set to balanced, 41 FPS on average and 21 for the 1% lows. Sure, not the most luxurious experience, but I guess it's playable overall. Not sure about heavier scenes in portals, but further lowering the resolution is always an option, as in here the CPU is not the bottleneck by any means. Bioshock Infinite from 2013 actually ran quite well at 1080p with high settings, probably being the sharpest experience I had on this B-Link EQI13 within my gaming tests. 61 FPS on average and 45 FPS for the 1% lows make a pretty solid and enjoyable gaming experience. If you haven't played it yet and you're into single player shooters with cool looking levels, you should definitely go for it. So overall, it's clearly not capable enough for more recent AAA games like Cyberpunk, Hogwarts Legacy or Indiana Jones, but some casual indie and eSport gaming is okay depending on the title. I also want to mention that I did have issues in the beginning when it was installing the newest Windows updates. I don't know if it's Beelings or Microsoft's fault. I even tried reinstalling Windows, didn't help at first, took a lot of tries, and it was a bit of a hassle, but eventually it worked after some automatic Windows update repair was kicking in. Overall, I'd consider this a really good package for this low price. A perfect everyday mini PC if gaming isn't important to you. It's cool and it's quiet, it's fast, it's upgradable, it's well built. And if you're okay with the port selection, it's definitely a recommendation from my side. I mean, it has 10 cores, 16 threads, 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD. If it doesn't break, it will last really long as an everyday driver. Watching YouTube, browsing, picture editing, some video editing, casual gaming, everything's possible while being super quiet and cool at the same time. And that's already all for today. If you want to try out the B-Link EQI13 yourself, make sure to check the link in the description or the comments. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed the content and or subscribe to the channel. That helps a lot. Thanks. Also, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.